Parallel Congresses, insecurity and boycotting mar the just concluded APC state congresses. And Zerab takes the administration of President Muhammad Buhari to court. They want the courts to declare the administration's plan to monitor WhatsApp illegal. This is Plus Politics, and I am Mary Anacorn. The just concluded APC Congress experienced a variety of issues in various states in the country. For instance, in Anambra, the Congress was postponed due to insecurity. Uh, the one in all your state was suspended. Um, four chairmen emerged in Akwaibum due to parallel Congresses, the boycotting of the Congress in Delta State, among others. It is also worthy of mention that in almost all states, a parallel Congress was held, including Lagos and Oyo. The People's Democratic Party PDP responded to this and other reports reprimanding the ruling party saying it was a clear signal of serious reasons why the nation had been in disaster. Well, joining us to discuss this is Jide Ologun, a legal practitioner, and Achike Chude, a political affairs analyst. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for joining us. Pleasure. Okay. All right. So I'm, I'm going to start with you, Barisa Ologun. Um, just before the convention, or rather the state congresses, we spoke about these issues with some other people, and, and pe people were uh, many people spoke of Lagos. In fact, many other states, aside from Kwara, uh, many people were more optimistic about you know other states other than Lagos. They were hoping, in fact, they were so certain that Lagos state was going to experience parallel congresses. But then let's start with Lagos because that's where we are. One would think that Lagos APC has it all together, being that the leader of the APC is from Lagos State. But what we saw over the weekend um, did not necessarily point to that. You know, there are at least two approaches to promoting internal democracy within political parties, because we are talking about uh, party congresses now. And one is advocacy. The other is legal or regulatory approaches. So, and you must begin to ask questions in this direction. That was there sufficient inclusiveness within the party to ensure that we did not have the cross congress that took place? And again, have we been able to frame all the rules and regulations within the system that will prevent those who are overtly ambitious in court now from running in such a manner that will bring embarrassment to the party, except we just want to assume, and like they say that assumption is the lowest level of knowledge, that um, situations like these <clears throat> should be part of politics. And when you talk about internal democracy also, I mean, you, you, must, you must generate methods of including party members in decision-making and deliberation within the party structure. Because what we are seeing now is basically about the control of the party structure power. If you look at the case of Quarasi, for instance, we've seen the governor that controls a faction being at loggerhead with a minister at the federal level that controls an other faction uh, claiming that I am in control, you are in control. And if at the party level we have not been able to bring about true democracy. How can we now begin to deliver dividends of good governance to the people? And these are the concerns of uh, many of us as, as, as we dialogue now. And in virtually all the states, the exercise became continuation of struggle for the control of the party structure. And some of us have been of the position that if political victories in the country have been engaged to get back to good governance. By now, we have less rancor within the party structure like we are having now. And it also appears that some parties are not learning from history. We recall how the crisis in the primaries in River State and some other states led to APC 
losing out to the other party. Mm. Recently, in a bill state also, you saw the rancors within the party that made Governor Basik to jump the vote of PPC and he crossed to PPP. And he won the election as a candidate and that was victory for PDP. So I think for, for, for now, we should have gone beyond the inability to put our houses in order so that when we eventually step into the opportunity of managing the nation at the macro level, we also come out with excellent results. Okay. Let me move to Achike. Achike, um, still staying with Lagos. Don't, let's not forget that um, Lagos State APC came up with the whole Southwest uh, for Asiwaju, and you know the Southwest is also pushing for presidency to the South. And if if this is what we're seeing, don't forget the states, the majority of the states that had rancor, or your state um, had its own issues. Ogun State reportedly there were gunshots. Um, Kwara State, I mean the the numbers are being raked in. If the Southwest does not or is not seen to be able to put itself together, how can they be pushing or positioning for a presidency? Be that, I mean, whoever it might be, whether it's from Lagos, whether it's from any other state, how, how should, I mean, the voting populace look at the APC in the Southwest? Yeah, well... Um the, the Southwest, like you have rightly said, is uh, supposed to be the, you know, the hunting ground of the APC, the home of the APC. And uh, of course, if you're talking about the APC, you're talking of uh, one major person, uh, Bola Ahmed Tinubu, the Ashwaju. He is the, you, you could call him the spiritual head of uh, the APC or political head of the APC, but uh, the reality is that uh, he has been the leader, unchallenged, undisputed. Uh, for so many years uh, now, starting from uh, the ACN and all that, AC and all that, uh, you know, and then uh, the APC, obviously. Uh, but what you have been seeing, you know, what we have been seeing in the past few days is a diminution of his authority, uh, you know, and um, the Really? Respect. How so? How, when uh, you say diminishing uh, of his authority, how so? I mean, yes, of, of course, uh, um, he does have, uh, he is the leader of the party, but he cannot tell states and, and um, you know, and the, the state level parties how to run their internal party democracy, can he? Well, he has always done that. I mean, it's always been out there, you know, in the politics of uh, Lagos State, for instance, and the Southwest, that um, uh, he uh, is the dominant uh, personality within the APC. Uh, his word is uh, law, is authority, and it has been uh, you know, reported all this while that uh, he has a hand in virtually all the elective positions that uh, uh, go on, especially in Lagos State, which is the bastion of, uh, of uh, his uh, political empire, uh, that uh, he uh, has to give the nod to you know, everybody that wants to contest, even as, as lower as, um, as low level as uh, even uh, the the councillorship of uh, of uh, the party the rumor has been out there for so long but, but he did come but he did uh, come out Achike, but he did come out um, be just before the local government elections to say that these are all allegations he doesn't have a hand that if you are, if you think that you are capable throw your hat into the ring and if your people feel that you should yeah, yeah. run of course they will vote for you so really could we say that this is a rumor or a belief it's that has been put a, out there he's a politician he's a, he's expected he's expected to say so the reality is that um, uh, he must have, if you if you have any serious uh, political, you know, motivation, ambition in in Lagos State, most especially, uh, it is better for you uh, for your political successes to seek the favor of uh, the uh, person that matters more than any other person within the politics of uh, the state. And uh, you know, and uh, the reality is that it is not a new thing. In virtually every part of the country, you also have godfathers who. Uh, have a larger than life image, more or less, who can determine the political direction of uh, any particular person. Uh, you know, in most cases, these godfathers are the funders of uh, the party. And, and because they are the funders of the party, they tend to have a very big say uh, in what happens within the party structure. Do not forget that um, in the in the uh, First Republic, we had uh, members of uh, political parties who were contributing to the fortunes of uh, these parties. Uh, that is not the case anymore. The 
politicians but grow this uh, political party and he who pays the piper must always uh, dictate the tune but i was talking about uh, his the, the diminution of uh, his influence in the southwest especially in lagos i uh, do not forget that at a particular point in time when uh, the apc had swept the entire southwest uh, he took uh, some uh, intrigues with Obasanjo in discussion with, uh, you know, Tinubu uh, to, you know, allow the PDP win some, uh, some, uh, some concessions within the Southwest, especially the governorships of some of the states in the Southwest, uh, which uh, Obasanjo, you know, somehow uh, went against some agreements that uh, he they already had in place with uh, Tinubu, but Tinubu was able to bounce back and his party was able to bounce back. Mm -hmm. But over time, you have seen the APC or the ACM before they suffer losses in places like Osho State before now, in places like Ekiti State and in places like Oyo State. And the empire before then had, you know, gone moved to most of the states in the southwest. So, but you still have a very, very strong bastion, which is Lagos State. And But over the past few years and in the last few congresses that we have had in the state, you have had opposition. In fact, from 1999, when he was governor, two-term governor of Lagos State, till about when Fashola uh, you know, became, was governor and left office as governor, there was nobody who had the guts, who had the courage, who had the clout to challenge Tinubu or to challenge the political hegemony of Lagos State at a particular, I mean, you know, for, for that period of time. But over time, just like the last Congress that we had, we've had people who, who, who have shown that courage for whatever reason to challenge uh, the hegemon in Lagos State. And that is what we are seeing again in the primaries that have taken place. But it is not just a, an APC thing, Lagos State or Southwest State. It is a problem with the APC as a political party. And that has to do with the fact that this is a party, you know, that brought people from different, uh, you know, disparate uh, leanings to come together and to form a political party. Mm -hmm. But you know, in the way they when they in the way in the structure of the party and in the way the party goes about doing its things, you realize that somehow uh, they have fallen short of a political party. So you just have a political party in name. But more or less the APC as a political party is more of an association of people with similar interests. And what are, what are those interests? Power, raw power, political power for the sake of power itself. Okay. You know, and that's why there's no enduring, you know, a, a democratic, you know, ethos, no enduring philosophical construct or ideological basis on which they do their things. So okay. you, you have politicians move from one party to another party, you know, uh, and, and all that. It is simply because there's no enduring, you know, philosophical oh. construct that wields these people together. And that's why you are seeing all of these parallel congresses because they are not motivated by any any sound ideological compass, but except the desire for political power for the sake of it. Let me go back to Barstow Logan. It seems very obvious that um, these congresses this time around are um, between the governors versus, um, you know, former governors. It seems um, more so like that. And we've also seen stories of, you know, um, um, former the former governors of Oshun and Ogun states maybe having to lose out uh, as a result of these congresses. I mean, we've seen uh, even the former, um, or rather the um, Minister for Information, uh, in his state, it, it's, it's a, a versus between the governor versus him, and then versus the Minister for State, uh, for Minister of State for Transportation in Kwara State. We have seen all kinds of terrible videos come out of Kwara State. First, it was about the chairmanship of the party, um, when the APC in River State had their re-registration um, exercise, we saw some terrible fighting. I mean, I cannot get that video out of my head. They were throwing uh, seats at each other and, you know, going at each other. Um, so it, it makes me really wonder, why is it a, a versus between the governors and the, uh, and the former governors? You see, this is a very brilliant question that we have on the table. And I must say it's because we have relegated good governors not just the back seat, but to the boot of the vehicle locked up there. Because if we have paid attention to good governance, having exercised the opportunity of governing a state, the next post of assignment is for you to occupy a space of respect and just watch and advise from the background. But now that we have found ourselves in a different democracy in Nigeria, where it may be the government of the people, by the government, and for the elites. So you see people clamoring for power, 
And by extension and by reflection of the mirror, what happens is that the more poverty you create in society, the more impoverished you are with your so-called riches. So you must also always struggle to retain the power so that you have that false sense of security. If, I mean, I, I mean, when, when you talk about the likes of Obama in, 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 in the Democrats in, in, in America, these guys will rather back up candidates and things like that. But you see a situation where politicians are deliberately rocking the... I was involved in a battle concerning the case of Parasite before these uh, Congresses, and it was, it was not a beautiful one at all. A political stalwart was actually abusing the, the governor that is there now and claiming that if APC has any interest in Parasite, that governor must not be presented for election again. So you begin to wonder what has happened to the tenets of internal democracy. But where you abandon the interests of the people and you begin to project your personal ambition, this is where you find yourself. Because, I mean, look at what happened in 2015, the enormous goodwill that was delivered to this party. And today, you can hardly differentiate between the two parties in terms of learning from their failures or learning from their successes because the people have been impoverished. We have various crises in the country. And this is a confirmation that rather than focusing on solving the problems in the land and enhancing the fortunes of the people, they are busy struggling for power. And the big question is, why do you need this power? Why do you need this authority? Of course, to carry out the mandate of the constitution that says that the security and the welfare of the people shall be the primary purpose of government. So uh, some of us may predict that they, may, they should expect more of this until they begin to pay attention to the purpose of being in office, which is to serve the people and bring prosperity back to the nation. It makes me really wonder if um, the APC has learned, um, because you were making reference to that, if they've le really learned from their mistakes. Uh, because many, many pundits have said that the reason why the APC will keep struggling as a political party uh, is because they did not have clear-cut principles and a plan of sorts, other than to take out the government that was in power at the time. But let's talk about learning from mistakes. Let's look at a state like River State, where we've had the same issue go on and on and on, and it's still repeating itself, even it repeated itself on the weekend. We remember that in 2019, the APC lost all of its tickets uh, in River State because of the same issues of um, factions, where we have the Minister of Transportation versus a former Senator, Magnus Abbey, and people that... Uh, you know, um, follow him. And this is what still transpired over the weekend. And really, does the APC, or is the APC, let me put it this way, really ready to learn from its mistakes to move ahead? Is there a plan whatsoever? Or are we going to keep seeing these things happen? And, and, and if this keeps happening, what's the hope for 2023 and all the plans that they may have? Yeah, well... Um... <laughs> Well, if, um, if a politician, by definition, is somebody who seeks electoral office in an election mm -hmm. for the purpose of improving on the lives of the people, if that is a primary motivation for politics and for politicians, then those of them who are you know, politicians in this country are not exactly politicians, but you could describe you describe them as mercenaries, you know, or people who, uh, you know, the mercenary is essentially a soldier of fortune. Uh, he, there are no moral compulsions. And uh, so he seeks power for the sake of power. And we have talked about it and that there's no enduring democratic ethos uh, that motivates them. Uh, there is nothing altruistic in their, in their involvement with politics. But they see politics as a basis, as a as as, as a basis, you know, for self-aggrandizement, and that is what we have seen over the years. And so you wonder why a country like Nigeria, after 60 years of independence, finds itself in such a you know economic political quagmire, you know, morass. It is simply because the people who we call politicians are, are more or less a band of of uh, soldiers of fortune uh, who you know, have, have realized that there's a legitimate 
process for illegitimate acquisition of wealth. And that process is to get into the political terrain, uh, you know, under a system that is perverse, and then make the most out of that system. And so we have seen them feather their nest successfully, uh, you know, smiling to the banks over the years, whether as governors, as ministers, as, as, as presidents, and, and so on. And that is why a country that is so blessed with all manners of resources, you know, mineral and then, you know, human resources is wallowing in mediocrity. Mm -hmm. Of course, the politicians have not, uh, if there's a saying that, um, you know, uh, the, the, the person, the human, you know, the being, has, you know, a Nigerian politician has learned nothing and has forgotten nothing. And that is why you, you are talking about what happened, what transpired in the past few years in River State, repeating itself, you know, again, and in virtually every state of the country. And this is, I mean, of course, we all remember how the AC, AP came to power, just like you said in your opening. They came to power be They came to power because they wanted power. And so they did everything to remove the government of the day. But having come to power, they realized that they were not ready. And that is why they have hardly been able to deliver, you know, as much as they should have delivered as a political party. You know, so what you see in terms of delivery is just mere tokenism, uh, you know, within the political space. So they, they, they have forgotten nothing. They have learned nothing. And that's why they continue to move along the same trajectory mm -hmm. and uh, you know you can and they, like they say you cannot keep on doing the same thing in order to get a different set of results so it is results what they are known for it is the confusion they are known for that we are seeing so there is nothing new there's really no redeeming quality about the apc as a political party i don't want to talk about the other party because you also say the same thing about that but then the discussion uh, we will, is we will get the to APC the point where we, in closing we will talk about <laughs> it but but let's talk about some of the legalities barrister logan we're taking this question to you Let's talk about the legalities of these parallel congresses because now it's very difficult. It's it's difficult to really know who who's who or who INEC is going to recognize because that's my question. Who will INEC recognize? Which congresses will INEC look at as the original congresses? Now I'm gonna I'm asking because um, according to the Punch newspaper, um, APC's national caretaker. Uh, um, uh, chairman was present at the Congress organized by um, the current governor uh, in both Ogun State and I think Oshun State. Um, so it makes me really wonder uh, which ones will INEC have to, you know, give a nod to in in this regard? See, because it looks like almost mind. half of half of the states across the country for the APC had parallel congresses. Enugu State had parallel congresses also, even though. Uh, the one that the the one that was supported by the um, leadership of the APC uh, had a different person emerging, and there was another one that was held in another location. So it it, it makes a mess of everything. How does INEC come in here, and where's the legality in all of this? INEC's position is very simple: parties are expected to present candidates, and from the body language of the APC, from what we have been monitoring. I think the governors in the states may have upper hand with their supporters against the parallel congresses. And if that is the direction the party is flowing, then you expect that candidates that are presented by the group loyal to the governor or the group that the governor is loyal to will eventually be presented. So it's, it's, it's a function of power game. Well, like I said earlier, can the party at this point now look inward and consider the gap in the existing laws and come up with new laws that will prevent the sustainability of this present crisis? For example, is it wrong, for instance, if the party comes up with the rule that the moment the party decides to go on Congress, anyone who decides to have a parallel congress, this is what will happen, or it will not be allowed, it will be delisted, rather than being reactive. For example, look at a clause, should be clause 87 of the electoral bill that has just been presented for the absence of the president. It has specifically recommended a direct primaries for the parties. So right now, indirect primary, it's not even an option. But in the absence of clarity, 
you have what we call ambiguous law. Okay. And when you have ambiguous laws, it can be interpreted by anybody to flow in any direction. Mm. So for APC to show leadership and maximize the benefits of victory at the polls, they must come together. And may I suggest there are about five steps to conflict resolution because you cannot rule out conflicts when you discuss uh, relationship management. Public relations, you define the source of the conflict. What is the source of the conflict that you're having within the party? Is it that some feel marginalized, the different kinds of agitation, just like what you have in the nation generally? Number two, you look beyond the incident, you know, and you need a very strong management skills in this area. You have to listen to the parties, look at the, the long-term effects mm -hmm. of your decision. And number three, you request for solutions from the conflicting parties. The number four, you identify solutions that will be applicable to the parties that are conflicting with each other. Then you go to the point of agreement and you apply this agreement so that you can have unity. And has it not been declared in the word of God in Amos chapter three, verse three, that can two work together except they be agreed? It's still painful that APC lost out a do state. I mean, it was imagined that the, the, the governor then that was in APC was not going to flex enough muscle to win at the polls. Oh, he did. But we are having a repeat now in the country and in, in some of the states. And what we have observed is that at the macro level, we are yet to come to the point where government is interested in enhancing the fortunes of the people. And as long as the selfish interest in politicking, the unbridled ambition, the crave for power that is not engaged to maximize the resources of the country are on the front burner. We continue to have instances like this where they beat each other up, you know, scatter everything. And it, it, it's really unfortunate that uh, mm. the democracy we have adopted, we have so bastardized it that those who defined it may be struggling now to really come to the real definition of democracy, because democracy is the government of the people by the people and for the people. And it must be to benefit the people. It must be in the interest of the people. Or can we claim that that is where we are as a nation now? So and they say that, that That's a whole conversation on its own, if you ask me. But, but lastly, before we wrap things up, the P People's Democratic Party, the PDP, seems to be um, somewhat, for, for want of a better word, gloating in the face of the APC as they have seen the results of, um, you know, the, week, um, the weekend um, um, congresses. But again, I'm curious, what grounds does the PDP have, uh, you know, in this regard, being that it's very difficult to, to tell the difference or to decipher between the APC and the PDP in terms of internal democracy, being that I mean, the only thing that dif differentiates them might just be the party logo, but most of the people who are in these political parties have been on either sides of the divide before. So should the PDP be in a position to, uh, again, gloat uh, in the face of the APC? Is it like you have rightly observed? I think we are talking about politicians now, and they either hold the broom or hide under the umbrella. So basically, the mindset of an average Nigerian politician is yet to come to the level of benefiting the people, you see. And that is why you may find it difficult differentiating between them by virtue of party nomenclature. And by the way, APC came up in 2013 with a bouquet of fragments of parties, the ABGA, the CPC, all of them coming together, the new I think we lost him. Uh, let's see if we can get him back. Uh, if not, we will wrap up this segment. Barista Logo, can you hear me? And decide to serve the people. Well, I think we lost him. Uh, lost our connection with him, but I want to say thank you. Um, Jido Logo is a lawyer, and of course, Chike Chude is a political affairs analyst. Thank you very much, gentlemen. The internet, internet connection there has been a bit shady, but we thank you for being part of this segment. We'll take a quick break, and when we return, the Nigerian government wants to monitor your WhatsApp calls and text messages, but Sarah disagrees with this move. Let's get to talk more about it after this break. <laughs> 